Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I want to go ahead and kind of explain to you guys my money making method uh, essentially as I play through Path of Exile. Now before I get into this video I want to say that this is specifically for hardcore so it's probably going to be different if you don't play the hardcore league. Uh, and just know that there are so many different methods you can use for making money and I'm going to list off a few of them starting right now and if you want to go look them up for further detail I'm sure like Ziggy, Lifting Nerd Bro, Mathel, um, tons of people have stuff on their content, Yoji as well, you know I can't leave out, I mean there's a bunch of different YouTubers as well. So I'm going to name some of the things that you can do and I'm going to name what I do at the end of it which is actually one of the most common methods. So number one, you can make an early magic finder. Uh, magic finding at the beginning of the game is pretty decent because um, finding uniques, you know, day one, two, and three in the league, even like the first week, can potentially be the difference between a 20 chaos item and like a one chaos item. If you look at like Morohi, for example, um, and even like Lightning Coil and stuff like that. Another way you can make money is simply just making a very fast clear speed build like Volspark, getting it, you know, started as quick as you can and just power through and destroy like dried lake you know pick up the currency drops pick up the six sockets pick up unid items chaos recipe is not that bad but don't do chaos recipe unless you're doing unid for 2c per make sure you have like 20 stash tabs dedicated to it so that's kind of pay to win and just like fucking straight up like like a robot just be like super everything perfect or else it's just honestly not worth it uh, same thing with Regal Tab at 75 plus item level, since Regals at the beginning of a league usually have a lot more value to them, and then it kind of falls off and you never worry about the recipes. Um, another thing is selling boss kills. This one works out very well, especially, I don't know if it actually has anything in softcore, but in hardcore it's very easy to essentially just day one or day two you're selling uh, cruel Malachi kills. You know, people will easily pay two chaos. Uh, to just get carried through like a cruel Malachi, and this falls off greatly later on. Uh, and then another thing is just selling act rushes, which can be very boring, but it is a thing. Uh, just making a fast build that can go through clear, uh, essentially, you know, it gets to the waypoints quickly so they get their teleports. The faster you can rush a group of five people, the faster you get paid and move on to your next group. Uh, something else you could do would be labyrinth running. And you don't even have to make a dedicated labyrinth farmer, you can just make one for like Merciless Lab. People will pay you 2-3 to three chaos easily per person for like a Merciless Lab carry. You know, you think if you have any decent build at like level 85 plus, I mean Merciless Azaro is never going to do anything to you, even if it's like 6 player HP, right? Uh, Uber Lab is something that is always profitable, so making an Uber Lab character right away Uber Lab is super good because Uber Lab essentially um, can supply map drops, like red map drops for players. A lot of players do shaped strands and shaped atlas tricks. I'm going to teach you a method that you don't have to do with shaped strands. Like you could do something like elsewhere and it's still really good. But yeah, Uber Lab drops um, your sets for Adziri, quality gems, so you can be right away to get all the quality gems. Um, you get the insane enchants, which can be build enabling for certain things. Um, you just get tons of shit in Uber Lab that's really fucking good. You also get the Uber Lab uniques like Death's Door is really insane. Uh, Zergle's Crank, I don't really think will have much. It's like, okay. Um, there's a couple good ones though. And then there's also that, like, the, the people who, like, compete for Uber Lab. I mean, there's a gem at the end or a jewel, but I don't need to really go into that because if you're competing, you already know what the fuck I'm talking about. Um, then there is, uh, oh yeah, so the method with maps, right? Selling maps early on into the league is something that I used to do that I didn't do this time because I was super casual But selling maps, you know being top on the ladder playing the game a lot and efficiently will make you money People want to buy maps early on because they want to progress their mapping tier, right? Um, selling uh, map completion bonuses like you know selling Vinkter, selling Adziri, selling if it's a challenge for example selling Shaper, etc. That goes into more boss killing, but another method is when people go on their atlas and they shape their atlas like this, for example, right? So you only have one tier 11 and one tier 10 and etc. We can't get things like steel rings and crystal belts um, and opal rings. And those sell for like 30 to 60 chaos per, if not even more, depending on it. I remember paying 80 chaos for my crystal belt. That was like three exalts in the beginning. Uh, and that is huge, and those only drop out of specific maps. If you look up on the wiki, you can actually see which maps they drop out of. Uh, so I actually think I'm going to do that for next league. I'm going to basically bite the bullet and find a map that's like pretty good layout, 
that I can force to get like crystal belts out of and I want to make sure that that map is adjacent to maps that can for example like overgrown ruin can drop a shaper's orb because then when I get fucked by the map drops because of you know what it's connected to at least the map I'm gonna get will sell so that's gonna be one of my methods I want to try uh, hopefully in 3.0 but I mean we really don't really know what's happening in 3.0 um, another thing is just killing bosses in general. This kind of goes hand in hand with selling bosses for achievements. But if you don't really want to do that because you don't feel comfortable, you know, stopping in the middle of a fight to like bring in people and then resume the fight that could potentially one shot your character in hardcore, you can just sell boss uh, like boss drops and you can kind of gamble and and do stuff like that. Uh, and that even goes into the uh, tier 16 maps as well. Uh, tier 16 maps always have a price on them because they are used to summon or to go fight Shaper. <clears throat> um, now another cool thing that you can do for people who don't know is playing with friends is also really beneficial. Uh, by playing with friends you can essentially have a friend who is a magic find color. This is what we did back in the day. I don't know if people still do this nowadays. And essentially you can have a guy magic finding for a six player party. So rather than you having to do it, you can have a carry build and your friend could essentially just, you know, be in the back and go ham. Now there is also something called like um, meta crafting and whatnot. And I'm going to go into two other really common methods for generating currency. So one of them would be something like crafting. Uh, so let me see if my friend is on. Yo, can you link me all the stuff you crafted for a YouTube video? Oh, you know, I'm on D&D. Feels bad, man. Feels Ector, man. Yo, can you link me all the stuff you crafted for a YouTube video? Isn't the power of editing awesome, guys? Um, so, I'll have Ector actually link me some of the stuff, and you guys will be able to see for, like, the newer players. Now, the other cool thing you can do is actually masters. So, alongside with crafting goes masters and whatnot. So Masters basically are your Forsaken Masters, Tora, Verici, uh, Vagan, Elrion, Leo, Haku, Zana, Katarina, and you can basically craft mods that you normally cannot craft like yourself. Uh, they have special properties they can do, and just early game, you know, you can get the good life resist, or the good life roll, the good resists, the percentage ES from Elrion. There's a bunch of really important things through crafting. And if you go to Global 820, slash global uh, 820 you'll see in global 820 people actually help each other out um, you know they'll sell to not sell but they'll offer Taurus bots and rotations and you guys can kind of help each other out so Ector does a method a lot of the time called crafting and basically you need to understand prefixes and suffixes and you can use a macro that I'll actually put in the comments below uh, that'll help you learn prefixes and suffixes but you should really try to do your homework on this and figure it out so basically Ector crafts uh, gear and so you know he buys the materials like whether it's Alk Scour, Essence Crafting um, or starting from the, I guess starting from the bottom, right? Uh, with like alteration spamming. So he's got a 900 ES uh, six link regalia. He's got another 760 six link. He has an 820 six link, 875 six link, 864 six link. Um, that's a pretty fucking decent crystal belt because it's got 20% reduced flash charges used. What is this? 530 ES shield. It looks like it has, let me actually just disable, is it this? Okay, he's got a 500 ES shield with 52 spell crit with a T1 lightning res roll. 377 helmet is, that's the helmet's okay. And then a 337, okay resist though. I know you can't see like the last stat on there, I apologize, here I'll fix it. There you go. Fucking, now the webcam's blocking it? Alright, game. There you go. No problem! Nice professional YouTuber. Yeah, so that was pretty much uh, the majority of the ways that I come across. Uh, I do apologize if I left some out. The last one I want to tell you guys, which is the method that I said as well. Uh, I kinda, I'm just going to elaborate on it a bit more. 
being um, ahead of most players, like being in the top 100 with you, for example, that's usually where I'm at, like top 50 or so. If I'm pushing really hard, maybe top 10, but that hasn't happened in like a year. So usually I'm in like the top 100 if I'm going for, you know, pretty, pretty hard because I get bored, man. I'm a little casual now. But when you're in that top 100, you just get so much shit, right? Like you just get so much shit. And as you accumulate all this stuff, people want it. People want like the tons of uniques you get. Sometimes you'll occasionally get a six link. You get your T1 unique drops and you just keep running maps. You just don't stop. Just keep running maps, keep running maps. Something will eventually drop and you level up from it. So for example, I've gotten like, um, what is it? Red Dream was my best drop, but it hasn't sold yet. So the price keeps diminishing on it. Um, I've also found a Cosprey's Malice. I found a couple other like 30 to 50 C items. I found like a Witchfire Brew. Just a bunch of stuff overall. Um, and the best ways to assist those drops is by running Breach because Breach adds density. Density equals potential chance at item. To further increase that, we add Beyond Monsters because they spawn as blues. So three blues and a yellow and then a unique. Guess what? That's pretty much what we're getting most of our items off of is the, the nice blue pack density and the rare monsters and potentially the uniques. And to further boost that chance, we're gonna use Onslaught on pretty much all of our maps because Onslaught gives, where is it, temp? Should have in here. 20% quantity of items found. So that's my method that I've used and I haven't made the most, I've made maybe like two and a half mirrors, three mirrors worth of currency. Uh, I say that because I used 6,250 fuses on my shafts to six link it. Um, and then, so that was over a mirror spent on my shafts. And then I died with over a mirror worth of currency. And then I have, you know, my entire bank still with two other characters. I've actually made quite a bit of currency. I just don't have it on me anymore because it's, you know, ripped in standard league. Uh, but yeah, these are the methods that I use. I hope this helps you guys out. I don't want to cover everything because I feel like my YouTube videos have been getting a little bit more attention than I'd like to have recently, and I don't want to destroy everyone's, you know, means of money, money making. I kind of want people to, to do their own thing. Like I still have some some that I haven't really revealed, but it's nothing really too big. Did I say do prophecies? Prophecies is a big thing too. Uh, prophecy chains and uh, Kadiro farming are also not bad methods. Um, and then some people do sacrifice fragment running. But anyway, that's it. That's all I'm gonna really say for this video. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourself. If you did, feel free to hit that like button and feel free to subscribe to the channel as well. Well, I said my intro or my outro like totally wrong. Um, and if you enjoyed the stream or the channel or holy fuck, this is why you don't swim in YouTube, guys. If you enjoyed the video, remember you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. Hope you guys have a wonderful time and I'll see you guys all tomorrow. Take care, everybody.